Hi, I'm Graham Harvey. I'm here at the farm in Little Bydham in Lincolnshire. Uh, it's quite an unusual farm for Lincolnshire and it's got livestock on it. And I'm here to meet the farmer, John Turner. Hello, Hi, um, John. Welcome to the Grange. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you. Let's show you around the farm. Come and have a look at some of our livestock. Great idea. Okay. Thanks. So this is a 250 acre farm which comprises about two-fifths of grass and the remaining three-fifths is arable. So it's a, what we call a sort of traditional mixed farm system. Um, and so it's really important for us that we get the best out of the grass here. Now you're um, a founder, of you, a group of you farmers have got together producing I understand, grass fed beef and you set up a special association. Can you tell me how that came about? There was a sort of a, a vague notion of transition farming and that follows the same sort of themes to the transition towns movement. It's how do we relocalise food production and how do we deal with this sort of model of farming when uh, fossil fuels become increasingly more expensive to, to extract. And so much of today's farming is actually dependent on fossil fuels. If you look at the use of tractor fuel, fertiliser, sprays, agrochemicals. All oil-based. All um, oil-based. Mm -hmm. And as the cost of that oil goes up, if we don't decouple from that reliance on it, then the cost of food is inevitably going to come up. And there has to be a point at which we do completely decouple from that. So transition farming as a concept is actually part of that roadmap, how we reduce that dependence. And out of a transition farming group meeting, we came up with about four or five people who, unbeknown to me, around the country had come to the same sort of um, conclusions about the importance of pasture fed. And we started this off as a discussion group, really, between ourselves, exchanging ideas and experiences and uh, also some of the challenges that are out there because there is, you know, there is a lot to be learned. Um, and we felt that really if this was going to have an impact, we needed a distinct method of production that was, that was defined. Um, and also we needed a brand name, a mark, that we could actually um, show that distinctive element of it at the point of sale. So it's a brand which will guarantee that these animals are raised on, on pasture alone? Yeah. That's right. It's, uh, there's a set of a very carefully uh, compiled set of standards which we know in practice work for farming, but they'll give that reassurance to the public. Those who aren't able to actually go out to farms, they will know exactly how that animal's been fed. And of course that has so many other um, added benefits because if you're not pumping huge amounts of high protein into an animal, its metabolism is working at a far more natural level and so many of the other problems that are quite often associated with livestock production such as uh, foot problems, mastitis in dairy cows, infertility, mm. they're all avoided because you are effectively controlling the amount of intake which is far more matched to the the, the animal's natural metabolism. So it's a more natural system of raising the animal, so the animals stay healthier, is that right? They do, mm -hmm. exactly. And it's those, I think it's those sort of reassurances that at the point of sale, people do care how uh, we farm, they care how animals are raised, and therefore the pastoral brand, which is the pasture-fed brand name, um, will be will will act as a reassurance to how those animals have been raised. And how will this differ from? We already have organic production with mm. uh, organic brands, which are well known now. Mm. Um, there are common areas, aren't there? There are common grounds, but you're very distinctive in your production, are you? It is, because this actually defines what the animals are fed. I think what we have seen over the, uh, certainly over the past four or five years with, with organics, is an increasing pressure from the wholesalers and the retail market. And we've seen the emergence of industrial organics. It's organics that actually fulfills the criteria set out in the standards but actually doesn't meet the spirit of what all the organic movement was all about which was to take it as a holistic system that you look at farms as a, as a closed system where nutrients are recycled and that animals are, are kept on a very extensive system. And that's precisely what you're doing here is it? Yeah. It is, I mean we feel we're getting back to possibly some of the um, the aspirations of the early organic movement in terms of getting the most out of um, the pasture. 
making sure the animals are matched to the to, to the grass um, and giving the reassurance back to the public. I wonder if we could go and look at uh, where you pack your meat and look at the brand itself. Sure, we can do that. Yeah, let's go and have a look. So this is it, John. Pastoral, pasture fed for life. What's this brand actually telling consumers? What we're hoping this will do is give people a very strong reassurance about how food is produced from livestock. So it embodies all of the production standards that we have put together as the Pasture Fed Livestock Association. All those benefits in terms of animal welfare, the actual value, the health benefits from the produce, and also those environmental benefits are all brought together under the pastoral brand. What it actually means is that these animals are raised from, from being calves to the end of their lives on pasture or on silage or on, on hay. That's all they're being fed, no grains at all. Okay. Now there aren't too many farmers producing uh, meat and milk this way at the moment, are there? Are you going to have enough supply to, to make a difference, do you think? No, you're quite right. I mean, it's very much an emerging brand and it's a, um, it's a developing concept in terms of UK farming. So um, we see this as a sort of a slow process of growth where we're bringing farmers on board, giving them reassurances about the viability of this as a farming system. Um, we also need the wider public to come on board with this and actually recognise the value of it, the significance of pasture fed as part of that longer term sustainable livestock production in the UK and to support it and actually also get involved in understanding what's involved in the production side of things and helping to shape um, shape the brand and shape shape the standards. Are you going to be promoting this, uh, sort of explaining to the public, going out in press and media as you are today and explaining what this means? What we're going to use um, is a website which helps explain the standards and also gives information about where people can actually buy pastoral uh, produce um, and we'll as, as a, an organisation, the Pasture Fed Livestock Association is very keen to develop local producer groups. So in a certain area, there will be uh, maybe a group of up to a dozen producers working, um, also involving people from outside farming as part of that process, just to reflect the fact that food production is very much um, a sort of a, a holistic approach between the farmers as producers, processors, the people who actually take those raw products and put them into a form where people buy them and that end consumer. So what we've taken is all this farming knowledge about uh, understanding the inputs into farming, understanding about the need to recycle nutrients, um, the very important part of uh, soil health within farming production. All those things have become embodied under, under and animal pasture health, food. of course. And animal Without health. A lot of, um medicines to, to keep the animal going. Sort of. yeah. And we're, we're here uh, on a farm in Lincolnshire and it's not that long ago that the public were, were faced with the realities of what intensive livestock production actually means. You've got a proposal for an 8,000 cow dairy herd at Nocturne and all of a sudden people can understand what industrialised food production means and the implications that that has for animal health. So Rather than us being in a position where we're criticising that as a way forward, pastoral and the work that the Pasture Fed Livestock Association is, is involved in is actually demonstrating a practical alternative. And we hope that the, the benefits of that will be understood by the people supporting it and also by policymakers. And in terms of uh, feeding the world, this will work in 21st century Britain and the 21st century world. This is the driver for this. It's, it's this model of how do we feed 9 billion people in 2050, these sorts of projections that's been put forward. The debate about that is very much modelled on the fact that emerging countries will be following a Western diet. That's one of intensive meat consumption and grain livestock, grain-fed meat. Grain meat, where you're using these seven units of protein to produce one 
piece of protein for, for human consumption. Yeah. That's dreadfully inefficient. Yeah. So instead of saying, how do we actually square the circle? We're going back to basics and saying, well, is that the right model? We believe pasture fed using grass and pasture that humans can't eat themselves using livestock to actually convert them into something that's of use to humans and at the same time having a vital part of uh, maintaining the countryside, the land, shaping the landscape, that sort of takes care of the grassland and areas that we can't grow useful crops on in this country and freeing up the land for good arable production for human consumption. That's all completely compatible with um, the, the future challenges of feeding this uh, growing world population. And I think the very important part is we're also sending out a message to developing countries to say that actually a lot of the models of production that you've got in developing countries are sustainable at the moment. They shouldn't be following a Western style diet and all the problems that that can actually bring with it. This isn't just another marketing brand. It's got its roots firmly in good farming practice. It's got its roots in a future model for food production which we think is sustainable and to take us forward. It's something that we know in the United States has, um, has really taken off, is very popular and has proved its worth as, as part of that solution for uh, sustainable farming. So I've got every reason to believe that it will be there in 20 years time. Well we wish you luck John and we'll be following progress on Pasture Promise TV. Thank you very much. Thanks very much indeed.